So what you see here is that now, uh, if someone is trying to maintain this park, you've created these two area, two areas that clearly look to be hotter than normal. Maybe there's something going on, and maybe there's something that needs to be inspected over here. So you could have a. Hi, I'm Varun from Hammer Missions, and in this video, we're going to talk about solo park inspections using drones. Right, so before we get into it, if you haven't looked at solo park inspections so far, that might be a great time because there's a couple of different things that we're going through in the world that make solo park inspections using drones a very interesting initiative. So if you think about what's happening in the world right now, there's so many countries that are pushing hard to have energy independence that solar and wind have actually surpassed the targets over the last couple of years. And if even if you just look at last year, which is 2022, the cost of energy production using solar actually fell by 13% and is currently at 0.038 US dollars per kilowatt hour. And we think this cost is actually going to keep uh, driving down. And so one of the things that's going to become really important is to essentially ensure that most of the utility parks, uh, PV parks, are actually optimized to um, efficiency. And, and so therefore, drone inspections are going to become increasingly important. And the third trend that's actually accelerating all of this is the fact that we've got thermal cameras now that we have on smaller drones, more portable drones that that uh, can be used for these inspections, things like the Mavic 3T or the or the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. So essentially, we've got now equipment that is relatively cost effective that can be used to power these inspections. So this video, I'm going to go through the end to end process on how to capture, process, visualize and deliver uh, drone data for solar park inspections. Right. Let's get into it. Right. So what you see on the screen at the moment is Hammer Missions, uh, the Hammer Hub product, which is what we're going to be using to plan our solo inspection. Um, so the way this would start is by essentially going through the mission planning phase. So the first step typically would be to essentially create your mission files to be able to define how you want the drone to fly and capture the data. So to do that, um, you would first create um, a mission folder I've already created one before the call. And after you've essentially created your mission folder, you would create your mission file. So with the mission file, you would essentially go in and sort of add your first mission. So let's say I would call this uh, solar park mapping. Uh, and once I've created my mission file, I can then choose to open the mission. And Hammer will essentially take us to um, a Google map. And this Google map can actually be centered uh, exactly to the coordinates of the solar park. So I've already got the solar park on the map over here, but you haven't, if you haven't got the solar park already, you can basically pop in the coordinates of the solar park and hit enter and hammer should take you straight to the park. So what you see here is essentially a really large solar park, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to be going to plan lots of different types of drone surveys. So for a solar park inspection, you don't always are doing an inspection. Sometimes you want to do a topological survey where the end customer wants to really see what the park looks like and build an understanding for that. And other times you're doing more of a panel inspection to understand how is the park operating and whether the panels are are operating um, as as they should and there's any and there aren't any issues with the cells or any dirt in the panels and things like that so the first thing i'm going to plan here is going to be a topological survey or a mapping flight and the goal would be to essentially produce a 3d model of this particular park because then that can be provided to the end customer so that they have an understanding for what the park looks like this is typically done either before the design process or right after the park's been initially built, because that just allows the operational teams of the park to understand uh, what the site looks like. Right, so uh, what I'm going to do to be able to create uh, a 3D model of this park is to essentially go into the missions menu over here. And once I'm in the missions menu, I can choose the 3D modeling option or even the mapping option. Now, since we, this is pretty large, um, uh, park. We want to minimize the time that it takes to capture this park in one shot. And therefore, we're going to choose the mapping option uh, as opposed to a 3D modeling one. But the 3D modeling one does have its own use case, and we'll come to that later in the video. So starting off with the mapping uh, option, I'm going to select that option. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially look at 
uh, covering the whole park in one flight um, and seeing if I can do that uh, with uh, potentially one of the Matrice drones. So I'm going to essentially go in and capture the whole park, hopefully in one flight. So um, I have created a rough boundary over the park and I'm going to press the OK button over there in the top right, which is going to create a default flight plan for this park. Now, this is a default flight plan. And uh, what I want to do is I want to essentially make adjustments so that the uh, area that's covering the park uh, fully covers the park. Um, and to make the planning process slightly faster, what I can do is, is essentially I can go into the settings menu by tapping on the gear icon over here uh, and then changing the drone I'm going to be flying with. So let's say I'm flying this with a Matrice 300. Uh, so I can choose the camera I'm going to be flying with. Let's say that's the P1 camera. So I choose the P1 camera. And what that's going to do is it's going to replan the flights with the P1 camera's parameters. And I can change the, the altitude of the flight. So let's say I want to fly this at 120 meters. Uh, because we've got such a large camera, we can afford to essentially fly uh, slightly higher. Um, and so uh, we're flying this now at 120 meters. Uh, and we've got the camera selected. Um, and we can start sort of setting up all the other parameters from the flight. So um, before I do that, uh, let me just make some quick adjustments and make sure that the entire park is being covered. So yes, we can see that um, that this might be a problem area. So I've adjusted the um, the uh, the park over there. I can add another point over here to make the boundary fit much more nicely. So add another point here, another point there. Um, and just I will go through all of the uh, boundaries to to ensure that we are not missing any areas, because the last thing you want is when you finish your survey, you don't want any part of the park missing. Uh, you want to have 100 percent coverage in terms of what can be seen in your data. So actually being a bit generous around the boundaries is a good way to actually do your uh, do your flight. So essentially, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that None of the areas are missing and we've got all of the panels in this park covered. Right. OK, so I think we are we are now getting there. Um, we should have everything covered. Right. So we have everything covered now. And uh, what I can now do is if I wanted, I can fly along the solar panels. But uh, it might be worth for me to actually not do that here because I'm, I'm only trying to create a 3D model in this particular flight. And we're going to come to inspections later. So it might be worth for me to essentially change the flight direction so I don't fly over this part that I don't need to um, and actually find a better flight time. So um, let's say, so we're flying with the P1 camera. Uh, that's that over there. Um, we can choose the altitude. Maybe I want to fly at 100 meters as opposed to 120. So I can replan with that. Um, there's no ground offset here because I'm taking off from the ground. With respect to the overlap, um, 70% overlap should suffice. So I'm going to change that to 70%. Um, and that might give me some flight time back. Uh, I'm going to change the side overlap to 70% as well. Flight direction is something I'm going to play with. So I'm going to change that to um, potentially this direction um, so that I can, I can avoid flying over the areas that I don't need to. Um, so something along the lines of yes so this feels a bit optimal so let me see if i can go to maybe let's try 20 degrees okay right so uh it seems like uh 20 degrees has given me quite an optimal flight plan where uh, i'm not flying over flying any of the areas um and i can keep my gimbal tilted minus 90 uh, I can also um, keep, so my flight speed is going to be automatically calculated. It's going to be calculated from the um, um, distance between every two images in the flight plan. So I wouldn't necessarily have to calculate this myself. If I try to change the flight speed, Hammer is going to give me uh, essentially uh, a prompt uh, to say that the flight speed may be, uh, uh, may be too much or too little. Uh, but basically, uh, four meters per second uh, seems to be the optimal flight speed, so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, 
And I can choose to either reverse the flight plan or fly from the starting point. So right now, the starting point is on this edge over here. Right, so yeah, this is about the start point. So the start point seems to be on this corner of the flight at the moment. Uh, if I want it, I can change the, the flight path so I can reverse the flight path uh, and have the drone start uh, in this corner instead. And that might just be more optimal based on my um, my start points. Um, I can open the, the, all of the planned images so I can see that the planned images are going across the park over here. And then I can also in I can also um, choose to enable smooth corners. And what that does is that every time the drone flies the park, when it when the drone gets to the boundaries, it will essentially fly in a smooth turn as opposed to flying um, in a rigid way. And that just allows you to save more flight time with respect to your flight. So okay, um, I'm going to turn off the photos, and that should give us our flight plan. So that's our first flight plan, essentially. Uh, and this is essentially, you know, doing, we'll capture images that can be stitched later on into a 2D map or a 3D model. And then that can be provided to the end customer so that they can have a view on what that looks like. So um, I'm going to essentially now switch over to what that looks like in terms of the images. Um, so um, you would essentially send this data to your app and to do that, you would basically um, go to this button over here and you would click send to app and then you can uh, load this flight plan on your drone. So in this example, we used a Matrice 300 with the P1 camera for the 3D modeling. So you can essentially send that to your, uh, to your smart controller by downloading the iOS app or the Android app. And if it's the smart controller, then the Android app. Uh, and downloading uh, Hammer on it. And once you've got Hammer on it, you can essentially sync your flight plan and then go fly this mission. So um, so once you've essentially flown the mission, you can bring all of the data back into Hammer Hub. And once you brought it into Hammer Hub, you can upload all of the images, uh, which I've got over here. And you can essentially process the data. So if you tap on the process button, uh, it will allow you to essentially choose whether you want to create a 2D map, a 3D model, or a 2D map and a 3D model. So in this particular scenario, we chose a 3D model. Um, and we hit process. Now to save some time, I have already processed this data set uh, before, um, before our video. So essentially uh, what you see on the screen over here is that the yellow areas or the yellow dots uh, were essentially the places where the drone took an image. And as you can see, it covered the entire park. Um, and if I wanted, I can turn off these photos and I can basically zoom in. And now I've got a 3D model, which gets better in quality as I zoom in. Um, I can su see the entire park in a bird's eye view, which was our goal for this particular mission to essentially see uh, the park from a topological survey point of view. And now this was done before a park. Uh, this was done after a park was just installed or just, um, just essentially... Um, uh, operational, but just allows the um, end customer, whether it's the owner and the operator of the park, to be able to see what everything looks like and what is the new facility um, going to look like. And they can essentially send that out to their stakeholders and sort of um, build more momentum on their project. So if you're able to provide this data, it's really useful for them to be able to um, just cross-check what does the actual um, park look like uh, without having to walk this park because obviously you can tell it's quite a large park and and essentially walking the entire site um, may not be feasible and having this bird's eye view in a topological survey is extremely helpful to owners and operators of these parks. Right, okay, so this is if this is either before the park's been installed or just after. But what about the inspection side of things? We obviously want to understand what does it take to actually inspect these panels? And we want to try to understand the condition of these panels and maintain the condition of these panels over time. Right, so for that, we're going to switch gears and move into the inspection workflow in Hammer. And for that particularly, we might have to go into the thermal domain because thermal cameras are very useful in terms of picking up anomalies. Um, so if there's, a, if there's an issue with a panel on a solar park, it would typically... Uh, it would typically come up in terms of the heat signature because the solar cell or something on the panel is going to have a different heat signature compared to the rest of the park. So 
let's switch gears over here and create a plan that is basically inspecting this park as opposed to mapping it. So um, going back to our missions in space, what I can do is I can now go into um, my folder and I can create a new file and I call this one Solar Park Inspection. Um, so once I've done that, I can Hammer will bring me back into the uh, map view and I can now choose to inspect the panels. Now, when it comes to inspection for panels, it's very common that you may not be required to inspect the entire park. It might be that there is only a certain um, certain area or certain part of the park that has been designated as um, an issue area. And so you might be required to inspect just that area. So in this particular example, what we're going to do is we're going to essentially inspect this particular part um, or this particular part of the solar park, which is um, uh, an array, um, uh, basically a, a set of um, solar arrays that uh, potentially aren't operating as expected and require further inspection. So to do that, um, we've got a new mission type in Hammer, which is called the Solar Inspection Mission Type. And if you wanted, you can also read more about it by clicking on the tooltip. But basically, we what we're going to do is we're going to use this particular Solar Inspection module to inspect these panels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the Solar Inspection module, and Hammer's going to ask me to create a polygon covering the inspection area. So I'm going to essentially create um, a polygon that covers the covers the the these this set of solar arrays. So I'm going to essentially uh, create um, a polygon that covers that, um, and I'm going to try to be as precise as possible. Um, so I've got um, this polygon here, and then we've got another boundary there, um, and that should, in theory essentially uh, cover that entire row of, of solar arrays. Uh, it seems like we might need another point over here. So I'm going to add another point there um, and maybe I'll have to drag it out later. So let me just quickly create this polygon. So if I tap OK, uh, I can drag this out to the left. And what I might need to do is I might need to bring this one out here um, just to cover it um, much more precisely. So we've got a precise coverage on this particular set of solar arrays. And what I wanna do now is I wanna actually create the flight path, uh, which is flying directly over the solar arrays or directly over the solar rows. Now, one of the things to understand here is that when you inspect a solar park with a thermal camera, sometimes it can be useful to fly at a lower altitude and to fly directly above the panels because those are the things that you're trying to inspect. And in this mission, our goal isn't really to create a map, it's to inspect the panels. So um, it's important to essentially create a flight plan that flies over directly over the solar panels and doesn't miss any of the panels. So once we've created our polygon, we can essentially go into the settings gear. And um, because of solar inspection mission, Hammer will ask us to mark the solar panels. So uh, before I do any of the other settings, I can essentially go in and ch choose the mark solar panels option. So I choose that and then I can drop a point on top of the solar array. And it's hammer's going to create a flight line through that solar um, solar row. And um, that's going to be the case for every single one of these. So what we can do is we can very precisely mark exactly where we want to fly, which is on top of these solar arrays. And it just allows us to ensure that our flight plan is going to match up with respect to the solar arrays that we want to fly, as opposed to having a flight plan that, um, you know, is more mapping related and has the right overlaps, but doesn't actually go over every single solar array in the right way. Uh, this just allows you to capture a level of detail and a level of uh, data that the clients can be sure that every row is essentially mapping up to one solar panel and you've got um, the you know a really high quality data set now it can be a bit laborious to mark through all the solar panels um, but you know at the end of the day um, you are sort of creating an output that is much more detailed and provides a better level of view for the end customer and also allows you to sort of differentiate the way you're doing your work and the amount of uh, and the and the and the quality of the data that you're providing, 
Now, one of the things that we are considering in Hammer to essentially allow is um, to allow for is the ability for Hammer to automatically create um, these flight lines based on the distance between every two panels, because the panels tend to be um, at uh, at sort of equal distance to each other. Um, but the um, but we still allow for this possibility because we think that um, that uh, not every solar park is the same, and sometimes having that flexibility of being able to really prescribe um, where every single row is is can be a quite quite a good thing to have. So um, okay, so all in all, uh, that should now be done. So uh, we have marked all of the solar panels on that particular um, on that particular. Uh, mission so um, we basically have now a different type of mission which is a solar inspection mission and that's covering each and every panel separately so if you wanted to sort of see how that works we can do a simulation but let me just finish all of the settings first so in this particular example um, instead of flying at 100 meters as we did with the last flight maybe we want to fly at uh, 20 meters because we want to be that much closer to the panels and so that just allows me to sort of set that up. Um, maybe the overlap can be at 20% because we don't really want to stitch this data into a 3D model. We just want to be able to look at all of the images and understand if there are any defects. The roll angle seems to be correct. It seems to be already matching up. Um, I could try to make this one degree to see if the row angle is much more aligned that way. Yeah, so maybe one degree is a bit more aligned. So I have essentially now moved it a little bit. Um, but if your panels weren't facing east, west, and were actually facing um, north, south, you could actually change this to 90 degrees and your your row angle will be completely different. To just illustrate what I mean, if I change this to 10 degrees, um, you will see that uh, I've now got a all of the lines are slightly off uh, so you can adjust the row angle so that it always lines up perfectly with your solar panels um, and i can now also adjust my drone orientation so this is quite important because ultimately what you want to do is you want to ensure that you have your drone facing the same orientation at all times because that helps with the inspection process in the post but also sometimes you have a glare and if you want to do an inspection you want to minimize the chances of glare in your images this is especially true if you're doing visual images and thermal images at the same time and so therefore you can choose to fly in a different orientation so if you see this yellow dot on the screen here that is actually currently pointing uh east west in terms of sorry west east in terms of the direction it's sort of going from west to east but if you wanted we can change the orientation to let's say 90 degrees um, and what that's going to do is that's going to change all of those uh, yellow dots and they're now going to be pointing down. So what that means is that your drone will be flying pointing north-south as opposed to west-east and it's just going to be looking in a different direction. And that combined with your gimbal tilt might just give you the best combination. So in this particular example, instead of supposed to north-south, maybe I want to go south-north. Maybe I want to look the other way. So if I change this to 180, um, that's going to point uh, on, on the left hand side. Uh, but what I really want to do is I want it to point uh, on the on on basically south north. So so it might be minus 90 is what I'm looking for. So if I change that to minus 90, now I've got the drone looking up, which is what I want in my inspection. And I also want a slight gimbal angle. So um, let me see if I can add the gimbal angle to be negative. Um, let's say negative 70. Now this really depends on what the uh, pitch of the drone is. So um, instead of looking exactly um, straight down, maybe you want to look um, with the same angle so that your your drone and your, your gimbal pitch of the solar park uh, of all the rows are actually aligned. So you're actually looking straight into the panel um, and you're covering as much surface area off the panel as possible. So this is something that you need to figure out. What is the pitch of the solar park? Um, you can obviously find that out by speaking to your clients, and then you can come in and input that value into Hammer to be able to create a flight plan. And then the second, the next thing on the list is to choose the flight speed. This by default is set to seven meters per second. Uh, I can choose to make it higher, but Hammer will automatically calculate the auto the optimal flight speed. So I I'd rather not fly higher than recommended because 
if I do, then I might miss photos and missing photos is a complete no, no. So uh, I'm going to keep it at the, at the flight speed recommended. Then we've got the flight path. So at the moment, the flight is scheduled to start in the top left corner of the polygon. Uh, but depending on where we are, when we are um, flying in terms of the takeoff location, we might want this to be on the southeast corner. So it really depends on where you're taking off from. So let's say if I um, reverse the flight path, uh, it's going to move the takeoff location to that corner instead. And depending on which way you're closer to, maybe you want to sort of start from the from the corner that's closest to you, moving further away and the drone coming back at the very end. Or you could also choose to start from the very end and the drone coming progressively close to you as it finishes the job because it saves some time on the return to go home function. Um, finally, I can also see all the planned images. So this workflow is also very similar to the 3D modeling workflow. Uh, and all the blue dots now that have been overlaid are the areas where an image is going to be taken uh, with a 20% overlap. Uh, and you can see it's got uh, perfect coverage with respect to having all the different solar rows covered. Uh, and even having a 20% overlap. And this just allows you to have that peace of mind that you're not going to miss anything. Because the last thing the client wants is that you go and do the drone inspection, but you miss something. And so it's really important that you have perfect coverage when it comes to inspection, that there is no areas missing. And having a detailed flight plan like this just allows you to have have that peace of mind that you're going to cover everything properly. Um, and it also means that every single role is actually captured in, in a in a precise manner and you aren't capturing any more images than needed this is a 224 image flight and that should cover all of this uh, section of the of the solar park right so i'm going to turn off this and i'm going to now before i do anything else do a quick simulation so i'm going to simulate what would it mean if i was to take off the drone from somewhere here uh, so if i press the play button What's going to happen is um, I'm going to have this um, go home location and I'm going to have a drone that shows up on the screen and shows me what the flight will look like. And you can, as you can see, as per my my uh, initial setup, I've got the drone flying um, looking south to north in terms of orientation and then flying every single row of the panel um, separately. Uh, I can also look at this not just in 2D, but I can also look at this in 3D. So I've got a 3D view over here uh, where I've got essentially the drone um, um, essentially uh, visualizing the, what the inspection looks like. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to restart the simulation so that uh, we can sort of have a look at the new start points. Uh, so which is basically over here. And I'm also going to turn on the location and the 3D view so we can see this flight plan in 3D with respect to the panels, uh, which essentially um, uh, are, um, so um, on our 3D view, actually the panels aren't visible. Um, that's probably because it's a new installation. So the 3D maps haven't really updated themselves. Um, and that's an interesting consideration actually, because um, sometimes you find that the, um, that the, the solar park that you want to map isn't actually on Google Maps. And so to be able to do those types of surveys, we made a whole video on how you can achieve the similar scale flight planning. Um, but essentially, it all boils down to proper preparation and having uh, access to maybe a KML file or a CAD file that can be overlaid in the software. So one of the things you can do is you can essentially overlay a PNG or a previous map or model inside Hammer. Um, and we made a whole video on how you can actually use um, previous maps or models or even CAD files to be able to do your solar flight planning. Um, but essentially, once you've got your flight plan um, and you're ready to do your inspection, you can send this data now to um, your apps. So you would essentially click on the sensor app button and then you would essentially have the app on your DJI smart controller. From the smart controller, you would, you would essentially sync the mission from the cloud back to your smart controller. And once you've got the mission on the smart controller, you would essentially fly this on site, capture all the data, all the details for your inspection, and then you'd bring all of that data back into Hammer. Um, so I'm going to stop here for the flight planning side of things, and we're going to move to the data processing side of things. Right, okay, so we are now looking at the captured uh, data uh, with respect to the solar park. Uh, so as you can see, we've got um, this part of the solar park. So that's the whole solar park. And we've got this particular parts of it that was captured uh, using a thermal camera. 
and we've brought in all of the images into Hammer. So this is a completely different type of view than what we saw with the um, with the 3D modeling side of things, because with the 3D modeling, it was important that we stitch all that data together and show the end customer or client what that what that solar park looks like. Uh, but when it comes to the inspection workflow, it's more nuanced. And what we want to do is we want to go through all these images and ensure that we can pick out the issues issue areas. So we've got all of the um, we've got all of the images over here as markers on the solar on the Google Map. And well, what we can do now is we can essentially uh, open up uh, the image and by simply clicking on it and we can uh, look at the issue areas. So you see a thermal image over here. And generally speaking, if you see these sort of um, um, sort of when you see white dots on the image, it uh, in a grayscale image, it might uh, indicate some form of um, sort of issue. So maybe this is a cell issue. So maybe you can you can create an annotation here saying solar cell issue and you can sort of create a tag uh, row one because we find this issue in the row first row of the solar park. Now, obviously, this inspection is actually should be done by experts who have seen a lot of thermal data and understand solar arrays quite deeply. Um, but the point is that you have all of this data available in a structured way that you can do this inspection and you can create more than one annotation per image as well. So you can sort of say solar cell issue two uh, and you can sort of create a tag row one once again. Um, and the reason for creating a tag is because maybe you want to remember where this image is and you can create a tag and we can see from our little mini map on the top left that this is the image we're looking at because it's blue uh, and so we have information on the issue is actually on the first row of the solar park or the section of the solar park um, but having all of that tagged in one place can be really helpful and from there on what you can do is you can essentially cycle through all the images you can click on any one of these thumbnails and then you can press the arrow keys to go uh, left and right. So over here, we have annotated some images beforehand. And what I can do is I can essentially just use the arrow keys to go through all the images. And you can see that there are lots of different images where you've got um, uh, different dots uh, that pop up. So um, if I was to essentially keep scrolling, you'll see that we have solar panels again in the view. And so you can see that there are these issue areas that come up every now and then. And some of these might be difficult issues, proper issues that need to be addressed and others might be more mild issues. So what you can also do is you can go in and annotate the data and you can sort of say uh, issue found. And this could just be, for example, um, this could be maybe just dirt on the solar panels. And if that's the case, then you can essentially um, add a tag saying dirt um, uh, and you can mark this as a, as a mild issue and not much to be done. But at the same time, you might have something over here that, you know, you might have like a actual uh, cell failure um, and you can essentially create that annotation and then you can mark it as you can create a tag called severe and you can also mark the image as severe. So you've got a red issue, which means there is a high severity level and then you've got a uh, an orange box, which means there's a mild severity level. And all through the, the capture, you can see the dots that are not yellow, but are actually orange or red. They indicate areas where we have found issues that seem to be um, quite quite problematic. For example, here might be a problematic issue. Uh, we can click on another park, another part, and this might be another problematic issue. And so it just allows you to, the platform just allows you to very quickly switch between lots of different images and see the issues quickly. So if you're a owner and operator of a solar park, you can have a very quick bird's eye view as to where the issues are, what do we need to do about them, and, and come up with a maintenance plan ASAP. So you can also filter through all the images over here in the bottom. So if you click on the annotated images, it will just essentially bring up all those issues that have bring up all those images that have issues. So instead of looking at everything, you can just look at all the different issues and you can sort of even see that there is um, roughly uh, 11 issues uh, in this particular project. And I can cycle through them very quickly and I can understand what they are and I can already start thinking, okay, well, what do we need to do about the solar park given its current condition? And as a drone service provider or maybe a part of an in-house drone team, if you're trying to provide this data to other stakeholders, what you don't want to do is you don't want to sort of have this data delivered as individual images or on a SD card. You want to send the data in a way that is 
meaningfully understand meaningfully understood by the the person you're sending the data to um, and therefore what you want to do is you want to essentially share the data by bringing on board um, more of the stakeholders online so you've got this data in a cloud-based platform you can press the share button over here and that just allows you to bring on board more of the stakeholders so essentially if you click on the share button um, you will be able to essentially add um, your your particular stakeholder um, you can add their user dot you can add their email over here and invite them to the platform and they'll be able to essentially look at all of the data with you maybe it's um, a solar consultant maybe it's an engineering surveyor maybe it's a thermographer that you want this data to be accessible to so you can essentially bring all of those different people onto the platform and they can all do their own annotation and findings um, with you so you can look at this solar park as a team as opposed to an individual effort and at the same time what you can also do is you can you can create a report for the solar park so you can essentially click on the reporting side of things and what you can do is you can export all of the annotated images um, or the filtered images or all of the tagged and annotated images into a report and you can uh, add an introductory paragraph you can add a cover image um, you can add your own logo uh, to this particular report um, you can choose to export image tags um, you can also add guest links to the report um, here's an example report and you would essentially have um, your images that have been marked up in the platform that would be exported um, you'd be able to look at all of the annotations and you would have all of the metadata uh, in the reports included. Uh, what has already been um, added, which is new to the platform, is that you'd be able to have a page that summarizes all of the issues and sort of says you've got seven mild issues, maybe four uh, severe issues in this particular project, but all of it is available in one place. And so if you send this report, a PDF report, uh, to any of the other stakeholders or to your clients, they can not only see all the issues or the images, but they can also click on any one of these um, these links and it will essentially take them straight back into the platform where they can see the um, the images and it can see the mini map and they can also see uh, exactly where the problem areas are. So they can see essentially all of the um, captured images. It takes them to exactly that image that they clicked the link from and it would also allows them to then annotate the data even if they don't have an account, because as you can see from um, my demo here, that I'm not actually logged into Hammer. This is completely uh, off. Um, this is completely uh, in a signed out mode, and essentially, um, they can look at the data uh, both in 2D and 3D if there was a 3D um, that that accompanied this. So um, this was uh, a very quick summary on the inspection side of things. And I'm going to now flip back once again into flight planning. So um, I think the last thing that I want to showcase over here is to look at the thermal data and to look at thermal processing. So uh, once again, I'm going to go back to my uh, mission planning interface and I'm going to essentially create a, a new file. So let me call this one thermal processing uh, mission. And once I've done that, I can open the mission file and it's going to bring me back to my solar park. And let's say we want to create a thermal map or a thermal model of this particular park, uh, of this particular part of the park. Now, the, the reason for doing this could be several, but sometimes you'd want to have all of your thermal data stitched up into a single image or into a single model. And depending on your stakeholder requirements, or your client requirements, you can very easily do this in Hammer. Uh, but what you would do instead of doing the mapping or the solar inspection uh, flight, which are the two flights that we, I demoed earlier in the video, you would actually go to your 3D modeling mission. So we would choose the 3D modeling mission. So I can essentially um, create um, create a, um, a rectangle or a polygon over this particular area. And then what I can do is I can actually go in there and I can choose my drone maybe i'm flying this with the mavic 3 um mavic 3 t um uh, ir camera so i can plan with that in mind i can choose my altitude let's say i've got an altitude of um 70 meters for this particular flight um i don't have any ground offset um maybe you want to maintain a 70 percent overlap for uh, this flight um 
flight direction uh, may not be super relevant because no matter which direction I fly in, I'm probably going to be having a similar flight time. Gimbal direction is going to be negative 90 because I want to look straight down into the panels. And my flight speed has been automatically calculated for me, so that's all good. Um, whether I want to reverse flight path or not, that is um, completely up to me. Um, smooth corners is something I want to have to optimize my flight time. And then I want to see all the planned images. And that, this should really show me like a grid of points. And that is true. I see a grid of points over here. And with a very qu quick few taps, I have been able to create a 3D modeling mission for an IR camera. And that's really important to note. Um, and once I've got this 3D modeling mission with an IR camera, I can send this uh, mission once again to my app. So I can send it to my DJI smart controller where I've got this mission and I can essentially bring it to the site and and um, connect to the drone and fly. Um, and once I've captured all the images, I can now process all this data into a thermal image. So that's the project we're going to look at next. So what's coming up on my screen now is essentially a solar a thermal map of the particular site. So if you look closely, you'll notice that uh, we've now got a thermal model or a thermal map of the particular site. As you can uh, see that this was a double grid um, flight path that was used. And as you might notice that this particular project was actually not captured using white hot palette, but was actually captured using the the iron ball palettes or the plasma palettes or the red hot palettes. There's different names given to the to a similar spectrum of, of colors that are used. So with respect to thermal processing in Hammer Hub, we generally recommend using the iron ball palettes as much as possible. Um, and this palette just yields better results when it comes to stitching of maps and models. So um, if you're looking to create a thermal map, we highly recommend creating this particular uh, uh, using this particular um, palette. Uh, so as you can see, all the images have been uploaded to Hammer Hub as before. And what we've got here is we've got a 3D model. So if I actually zoom in, I can see uh, that this is uh, a 3D model of the site. Now, uh, it's not going to be as perfect or as crisp a model as you would get from a visual perspective, but you're still able to get a nice picture of, of the map of the entire uh, solar park. And you can also switch between the 2D and the 3D view uh, to be able to see the map and the model. So you can essentially switch between 2D and 3D, and that just allows you to see uh, what the actual um, map versus model looks like. So um, yeah, so you've got your um, you've got your uh, solar park over here, which has your uh, 3D and 2D map uh, created in thermal, and this one particularly just allows you to have a very quick overview. And this one is less to do with, um, it's got less to do with looking at every single panel um, in a specific way, but more to sort of have the overview. So if I get rid of the images over here, uh, I can basically look at this park in a very bird's eye point of view. And I can already tell, well, there's something going on with these panels over here. And there's also some problem areas potentially around here because if you look at everything else, everything else is quite bright and and it's ex quite exposed in terms of images, but you've got a lot more heat signature over here. It seems like um, there is something going on with uh, these panels. They look to be slightly different and there are some other areas that sort of uh, do seem to be hotter. than Now, there might be several reasons for that. Um, you would obviously have to consult a thermographer or uh, someone specialized as an engineer to look at this data set. Um, but uh, if you're working from a drone point of view, you can obviously provide this data now to, to essentially inspect and annotate. Uh, so once again, you can go to the 2D mode if you require, and you can bring up all of the images and you can essentially zoom into any one of these images um, and you can essentially look at um, what that looks like in terms of um, the image. And uh, if there are any problem areas that come up, you can essentially annotate them. So you can annotate uh, any of the problem areas um, uh, and you can have a very quick broad strokes approach to sort of annotating any of the issues uh, in this particular project. So you can go both 2D and 3D and, and you can go from the images to, for you can go from the yellow dots over here to the actual images. So if I, for example, uh, identify that there are 
seems to be this seems to be an area that seems to be hotter than normal i can then essentially go in and sort of like say um uh potential problem area um and i can mark that as a bear so uh, very similar workflow to what you would do with an inspection, but you're essentially processing the thermal data into a map uh, in this time or a model this time. And if I wanted, I can not only leave the comment on the image, but I can also leave the comments on the actual panel itself. Uh, so I can add an annotation over here and I can call this one um, um, potentially um, an issue forming. Now, this is just an example. It might be that um, this, this particular sort of array is completely fine. Uh, if you think that's the case, looking at this project, watching this video, please do let me know in the comment section. Um, and you can add a description to the say, um, um, uh, uh, heat signature seems to be off, potentially worth looking at. You can create an urgency level moderate and you can save this particular comment uh in the model itself so you've got now a comment that's been stored at the right place in the model and therefore that can be queried later on and if you find that there are other areas that sort of uh, match the same signature or maybe even if you go through the park and you find that there is something completely off and something completely um not uh, as it should be you can basically now create uh, an annotation assuming let's say there's an area over here this area seems to be a bit hotter than expected uh, i can go in and sort of i can create another annotation over here and i can sort of say this is a severe issue forming um i can add all the details here um all the details and then I can create a um, high urgency value for this particular uh, for this particular issue, and that's going to get tracked in the platform. And so what you see here is that now, uh, if someone is trying to maintain this park, you've created these two area two areas that clearly look to be hotter than normal. Maybe there's something going on, and maybe there's something that needs to be inspected over here. So you could have a site engineer look at this. And when they come up with a repair plan or they come up with an, uh, a ground-based survey to understand what might be going on with those panels, they can essentially go in there and they can add a new comment. They can sort of say, um, no issues found in the ground survey. Um, and that can be added essentially as a comment. So you can essentially save that um, as a comment. And so basically you have a new uh, comment that's been added to the ongoing issue and potentially this gets resolved over time. So you can basically click on the resolve button here and then that issue gets resolved uh, and is no longer tracked as an issue. So uh, very quickly, what you can see is that we've gone from not just sort of the capturing of the solar park or not just capturing the reality, but also actually having this digital twin that is doing issue tracking and we're able to understand where are the problem issues? What, how are they happening? And what's being done about them? And so that just moves us from like this domain of capturing data to the domain of, of essentially tracking issues and asset maintenance, which is extremely valuable when it comes to uh, asset integrity. So yeah, capturing all of this, uh, resolving all the issues is basically where what's what this is all about. And I think drones are an important part uh, of the solution. So. Right. Uh, and as before, if you wanted, you can export all of this data into a report. Uh, you can share this data, first of all, with other team members. So you can invite them to Hammer Hub by just going into the share menu and then clicking on the um, share button and then inviting them. Uh, or you can also create um, a link to this project. So this link is a private link that if you send that to anyone, they would be able to see that data. So you can essentially bring anyone on to the drone data to have a look they don't need to have the an account they can also look at all of the 3d comments that have been created so that's all visible and possible um and finally they can once again create uh, they can have a look you can once again create a report and that report can be then essentially accessed by them um in an in a way that is uh, maybe not centric to their computer but more something that they can review on the go, even on a mobile phone or a P or an iPad. And that PDF report, as we demoed earlier, 
has all the data, has all the annotations, so they can understand um, what uh, what's the best course of action. Right. Okay. So we went through quite a few things over here. We went through the thermal stitched projects in terms of a thermal model or a thermal map. We went through our original topological survey, which was basically a 3D model of the entire site. Um, this is generally done uh, when the project is still new and you want to um, have a look at the entire site from a bird's eye view point of view. Um, and we also looked at um, the thermal uh, project, which was looking at the issues thermally. So that was another project. Um, and all in all, I think what I want to leave you with is this thought that there isn't really just one way of doing your solar inspection or one standard set of tools. Um, I think we need to start looking at solar maintenance as a continuum of different ways to capture, process, visualize the data. Sometimes there is a topological survey involved where you want to get a bird's eye view. Other times it's more of an inspection where you want to make sure you don't miss any panels. And very other times you have a thermal map or a model being created. And each one of those is a different use case, ultimately aimed at achieving the same thing, which is what is going on on site and are the panels in the right condition or not. Um, but there are these nuanced features and, and nuanced workflows that is important to get right if you want to deliver a high quality solar park inspection. Right, hopefully this video was useful. Um, feel free to leave us any comments on what you think are interesting workflows that we should cover uh, in our future videos. Um, if you have any thoughts on solar park inspections, the way you do them, and if there's any other features that we should incorporate into Hammer Missions, feel free to let us know. We are very happy to um, incorporate your feedback as we, as we ship new updates to the platform. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next iteration of the workflow videos.